Hi, right. hey, everybody. Um, I'm Lawrence Marker and I am from the National Centre for Atmospheric Sciences. Today, I want to talk a little bit about the operational forecasting we did for the West Con and Woos campaign over the summer. Um, this work is also supported by others at Leeds, um, Ralph Burton, Bob Brooks, James Groves, Stephen Mobbs, Alex Roberts, and Dan Walker, who is in fourth row. Um, so, briefly, I thought it'd be quite nice to say a little bit about who I am and what I do. So I'm, I'm a software developer based at NCAS in Leeds. Um, my, my work mainly centers around weather modeling, forecasting, and then developing kind of adjacent web applications to, to access the data that we produce. And a lot of that really is based around creating and maintaining services that um, basically users of NCAS observational facilities. Um, I do that as part of the, the FORCE team. So FORCE is our acronym for forecasting operations for research campaigns and experiments. And I just thought I'd put a nice picture of Fairburn House, where we all live in these lovely place, lovely place to work. <laughs> Very happy family. But um, so I'm sure a lot of people know what this is. So I'm not going to spend too much time, but there might be some people in the audience who don't know what NCAS is. But we are a national research centre um, with national capabilities, natural folk science, um, big focus on air pollution, climate impact, high impact weather, and long term global change. And then yeah, we provide the UK community with modeling and observational facilities for atmospheric science. So these are some of the observational facilities that, that NCAS kind of have and people who are doing atmospheric science within the UK and, and wider world community can apply to use these facilities. So we've got the FAM aircraft, which is based at Cranfield, not too far from here. Chilbotham radar, that's in Salisbury Plain. We've got the Cape Verde atmospheric observatory, which is in Cape Verde. And then um, NX Pol 2 x radar. There is tons of other equipment that NCAS has. But this is just kind of a bit of an idea of, of the things that our project supports. So if people want to use this equipment, we aim to produce forecasting that will help them use this more efficiently. You can imagine something like a nice big Boeing airplane. Uh, minutes saved is a lot of CO2 money and time that kind of doesn't go on NCAS's budget. So the, the Westcon and Woost campaigns, so Westcon was the Wessex Convection Experiment and Woost, got a nice nested acronym here, was the Westcon Observing the Evolving Structures of Turbulence and this happened in Wessex, so kind of around Salisbury Plain uh, in the summer that's just gone. The map here shows the kind of region where this was going on um, in the UK. There was a bit, it was a joint Met Office and NCAS experiment using lots of different equipment, mainly supplied and managed by NCAS. So this is the aircraft, different radars, lidars, those radio sun launches, drone observation, and also different surface measurements. Basically, the idea of the campaign, which, and this was taken straight from the, the Met Office website, um, fine scale measurement of updrafts, turbulence and dynamic convective clouds, pre-convective environment on storm development, and then boundary layer and convective structure interaction. So it was a lot of clouds chasing, really, in, a, in kind of simple terms, but that is that is what people are out there trying to do on social play. Um, so how we supported the, the campaign was through operational forecasting, as I say, and that really was just trying to help with decision making as to where people were going to be operating in that, that region that, I, that was on this slide, where people were kind of going to be working, where the plane was going to be flying, etc. And also whether um, the plane should even get into the sky at all, whether conditions are going to be correct. So this is kind of an image of the, the, the domain that we were running our, our model. So we've got a 20 kilometer resolution of the whole the Atlantic, well, North Atlantic, four kilometers over the UK. And then over that, that kind of the Southwest portion of the, the UK, well, the, um, of England and Wales, we ran two runs. We ran one at 800 meter and one at 1300 meter. And this was, we're still kind of benchmarking what we what we can provide for people. So that, that was what we're running. And we, we did this using the, the weather research forecast model and NCASA Wolf model. And we were doing 78 hour forecasts. From this, we were producing around 24,000 images a day. And I just want to note that running the model and all the, the imagery and post-processing was done locally on our machines in Leeds. Everything else was kind of done on jazz management to, to highlight this is, this is how we use Jasmine for this. Um, and a lot of these images were kind of standard stuff that we already knew how to produce, but we also worked with campaign PRs and different scientists who were doing experiments to kind of develop certain plots and imagery that would really help them in particular. Because a lot of this was to do with radars, looking at clouds, um, we did a lot of work on reflectivity. So I had a lot of nice reflectivity plots. On Jasmine, all of these images were stored on a group workspace, which then we could make publicly available to people. 
The catalogue of imagery was also run via a public web server, which is on a virtual machine. And we also hosted our interactive visualizer tool on a virtual machine on Jasmine too. So all of the kind of public facing work was hosted and provided by Jasmine. So transferring data to Jasmine, all of this imagery, 24,000 images, were put up every day. And then the, the inner nest model, so this region over Cornwall of the model, that was also uploaded so that people could interact with that data. So that was around 300 gigabytes a day getting put up. So model imagery, we produced cross sections, maps, and profiles. So this is um, a reflectivity plot. All of the, the visualizations are done by our colleague, Alex Roberts, who is in at the moment. Yeah, who we've got a cross section with some nice wind vectors on there. Really nice stretch here. You can see all the way through. But, um, and then we also had some skew tees. So the, the PR that we were working with actually preferred skew tees to tepograms, so we made them skew tees. So this was another thing we we're trying to do, providing people with the, the tools that they, they need and that, that work for them. And then also we have this graphic, which is reflectivity, but then also with cloud cover. And at the top right, you can see some hatching. So that is um, precipitation that would be likely to fall as snow. And as well as that catalog, we had our interactive visualizer, which is a tool that I've been working on. Um, and essentially this allows people to kind of point and click on a map and then produce profiles and cross sections from this. This was hosted on a web server on Jasmine and this is why 300 gigs of data was uploaded every day so that people could access this and play. So I'll go through a couple of the components and how it works. Um, initially you can drop down kind of the axes or, or location information that you want your plots to have. So you can see we've got a, a line here that's kind of will be the x-axis of a cross-section. It's quite hard to make out, but there is, in the southern part of Anglesey here, there is an x that would be where a profile would be. And um, I know that isn't the West Con Roost region, but when I was making these images, I was in Anglesey on holiday, unfortunately. So <laughs> I thought I may as well do this. But um, yeah, so you've kind of put down these axes. You can then choose what variables and at what times you want to do this. And all this is automated based on what data is available on the server. And then you want to do that, you send that off the server on the back end and it'll bring back the imagery that you've got. So this was some, a potential temperature and then uh, reflectivity. And all of this is done on Jasmine, all of the plotting, et cetera, done on Jasmine and web serving, whatnot. As well as this, because it is like a decision-making tool, we're trying to help people visualize the data and get the most out of it. We're also working on developing some overlays, which is actually really interesting to see how other people have been overlaying data using kind of maps and whatnot. Um, but this was actually quite a, basic way that I'd done just converting a net CDF to a to GeoJSON and then also converting it to a tile, but hopefully kind of working on actually converting each of these kind of features that you might see. So here you've got a cloud, this is reflectivity, some cloud system, creating individual GeoJSON elements, which would then be kept in a, a database and then could be queried based on um, latitude and longitude. And then also we overlaid some operational data. So this is the kind of file that well, the hymn sheet everyone was singing from. This is what the family aircraft had, Met Office had, and also NCAS folks. So you've kind of got this black grid, which is like um, kind of battleships esque. Go to B4, we've got a nice few you know, numbers forming, and then you've got radar rings, these white circles. And then again, this green uh, kind of boundary here, that was where um, the family aircraft was flying. And the pink region is the MOD areas. So don't, don't go there, it will end badly. <laughs> um, I built this using Docker, so container structure. It's the first project I used Docker on, on actually recommendations of people at Jasmine. Um, and I don't think I'll ever do anything differently ever again. It's well until the next thing comes along, but it's <laughs> it's really useful. So the, the kind of logic of it split up into managing the sessions. So this is how data was uploaded and moved around uh, during the time that people were on there and it managed what users were where. So, you know, this can take as many users as you were. Well. As many users as the computer will allow at one time. Um, so different people can be using it at different places and that will all be fine. The site service. So this is kind of your traditional serving of web pages, HTML, but also dealing with user interactions when they put requests in for the plots they had made. That was handled there. And the plot service, and um, as you can see, it's kind of I've stacked it. Um, this was one of the best things I found for using Docker. We could just scale this up. This is the most computationally heavy um, service out of anything. And when we had our VMs, this is kind of what we said, okay, we've got this many cores, so we'll bump this up because that was the thing that was really taking a long time. And then, and this was also used a lot of multiprocessing in Python within this to kind of get the most out of the cores that were being used. And it was all networks using NGX. But yeah, using Jasmine. So 
during this campaign, we had two virtual machines. We had our production server and our development. Production server had 16 CPUs and 16 gig of RAM, and then the development one, two CPUs and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, it was very generous of Jasmine to give us these two VMs in terms of, it was it was very useful for me to know that things that I was changing because this was operational on the development, which is great having that kind of test environment. Um, but how did Jasmine enable our work? One, it's reliability. We've got a small cluster in these, which we do all of our modeling and what on. We could serve web from there, but what if it goes down? We know that Jasmine is much more reliable than that. So that's you know a really big plus of using it. Accessibility, um, we can have a, a VM, which we are root user on and do all this stuff and kind of is very flexible for what we need to do, which again is really helpful for operational work. Generous with resources. They gave us exactly what we wanted and exactly what we needed, which is very good. And in general, just provided us with a lot of support throughout the setup and usage of machines. So yes, thank you, Jasmine, and thanks everyone for listening.